Hello guys, in order to make this animation, you do not need to know anything, because believe it or not, it is very straightforward. First, as you could have seen in the intro, our animation is connected with multiple transitions between scenes, which basically divides our animation into multiple small, independent animations. This is very helpful in the animation designing process, because you do not need to rely on the previous scene. Next, it is recommended to use a consistent color palette across your whole project, in order to keep the viewer's attention throughout the whole video. Now that we have covered everything that is essential, we can go inside Adobe After Effects and start with our animation. First, create a circle, and then in your timeline, find a end transform position and toggle it to zero. And then move your timestamp forward, wherever you want your animation to end, and then hit another keyframe, but here increase it to 100%. And that is how you create that loading circle effect. Now in the middle, create a text and then go to effects and find numbers. And then drag that effect onto your text layer. Now select a font style and position and then hit OK. Now increase size how much you want and toggle decimals to zero and find the end point where your loading animation ends and create a keyframe and toggle it to 100% and then go to back, hit another keyframe and toggle it to zero and make sure that you open this effect in your timeline. Also, you can change a uh, field color. Now we are going to create a transition. So first create a circle as we did earlier and make sure that the circle is above your text because when uh, our circle is scaling up, we want our text to be behind our circle. So we create that transition between scenes. So in order to do this, just use scale effect on your layer and experiment with it how much you want. You can even increase more than I did here in order to maybe fully transform your background. Here I'm also creating another circle above our previously created circle in order to add even more effects. And then going to add trim pads and also playing with end position and offset position, you can create this transition. Also here I'm going to add an impact effect. So when our circle becomes even larger, I want to add uh, effects sim similar to zaps. So I'll use pen tool to create them and make sure that you remove fill color. And also by playing with start and end position to trim pads, you can create this effect. And what you need to do when you create this is just simply create them wherever you want and copy and paste them and you'll create this effect. Also, I will add a glow effect, which you can find in effects layer. Next, we have transition using a polygon object. You can create it by going to tools and finding a polygon tool. And now in order to create this effect, find twist in add and animations, and then opening it in your timeline. And how you can create this effect is by creating a First keyframe, which holds zero value, and then finding a next keyframe where you want and adjusting a angle. And also you can play with scale in order to bring closer your object while it is rotating. And that is how you create a transition and also how you change a background color. Now, after a transition, I'm using a pen tool to create a clock hand. And in order to add rotation, as you did see earlier in the intro, you need to adjust anchor points. So here I'm adjusting anchor point. So it is in the center bottom of this clock hand. And then also add rotation in your timeline. 
by adjusting keyframes however you like. Now I'm adding circles because when our clock hand is rotating, I want to reveal a certain path. So in order to do that, I'll create three circles, but without fill color, only show color. So make sure that you remove a fill color and also to change a stroke color, however you like, and also to change a size of stroke, however you like. And a math behind this is that you create uh, three circles, but that they are different in size and also different in color. And then when you do that, we're going to play with trim pads. Also make sure that circles have center in the same spot. Now add start and end keyframe for trim pads and what I discovered is that in order to create this effect you need to give a head start to the start keyframe and then start and keyframe after for example three frames or four frames so that the last point is following the first point. And also in order to copy this exact same effect onto your other layers, just copy these keyframes and then open effects on that certain layer and then paste it at the exact same time. Now by scaling a clock hand, I'm going to create another transition and also I'm going to change a background color this way. And now I'm going to use a pen tool to create a curved lines. Also, make sure that both of these lines are on a different layers, which means that we can create a separate animation for each of these lines. Also, in order to create a curved line, just hold left click on your mouse when you're creating another next keyframe, and this way you'll create a curved line. This is for you guys that are not really familiar with pen tool. Also, I'm going to change a stroke color of my second line. And also you can add adjustments by selecting a selection tool and dragging out a certain anchor point. Also, I'm going to use a trim pads and adjusting our end position and start position. I'm going to create an effect that is similar to an effect that we created earlier, for example, in counting down circle. Next, I'm going to add transition by simply scaling up a circle. So you can create a perfect circle by selecting a oval tool and holding a shift on your keyboard and left click on your mouse and it'll create a perfect circle. And also you can scale it down and change a position, for example, at the bottom of the screen so it is not visible and then by moving a couple frames forward you can add another keyframe and you can increase scale size and also you can change a position depending on where your circle is located in the first keyframe and also this way you'll create another transition and also you'll change a background color Next we're going to add a cube animation, so create a cube and change the fill color and then click, right click on your mouse and open anchor point and here we'll adjust anchor point. So you can adjust anchor point on whatever edge of square you want because we'll be adding rotation so it's rotating with a center in whatever corner you decided to and then for me it helps to create a straight line so we have an orientation where our cube is rotating towards and so also that it has a straight line so I'm using a pen tool and you can increase the stroke size in order to see that line and I recommend you to lock that layer so it is not interrupting your workflow. In order to create this animation, you need to select a bottom anchor point, for example, and when 
your cube is rotating 90 degrees, that exact same anchor point needs to stay stable and opposite to that anchor point, so this anchor point on top, is rotating towards the bottom of your line. And then you repeat the same process for each rotation. Animation, you'll come across these malfunctions, so you need to fix this anchor point as I'm doing right here. So using a position anchor point, you will bring that anchor point towards the line. And now I open Adobe Illustrator and create a recycling bin. And then we'll import this illustration into our animation and we'll create a final part of our animation using this recycling bin. So when you create your, it doesn't need to be a recycling bin, it can be whatever you want. You can import that illustration inside your project and create an animation out of it. So just import that illustration and I'll be playing with scale and position in order to zoom in on this gray part of our recycling bin. And finally, we'll add text animation at the end. And that is our final animation. 